Okay, right. Um, sometimes, on a very windy day, your fire can blow around all over the place. You've got to watch yourself for that. It can take your eyebrows off. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a, um, a heat reflector, but also a windbreak. Heat reflectors are brilliant because as you're sitting around your campfire, more than 50% of your heat coming from that fire is going away from you. So if you build a reflector, it can bounce that heat back towards you which gives you a lot more benefit, especially during the night time when it gets colder. For our purposes, it's a bit windy today, so we're going to do it to break the wind as well. And here is a good uh, thing to use. We've got a tree that's come down and it's flattened a hazel coppice. So I'm going to use my saw. This is a lovely silky saw from Japan. And we're going to harvest this uh, and use this as the stakes of our windbreak. We're going to use this wood because it's actually still living. You can see the um, buds on it. But unfortunately, because this tree's been flattened, it is going to die eventually. So it's actually a really good one to harvest. When you're um, taking some wood, I'm going to cut this end off. I don't really need this piece. I want to find two nice um, straight poles that I can use as the main stakes uh, to put into the ground and then um, build some a little wall of wood against it. When you're using the saw, this is a... a, a big hand, uh, hand saw for two hands so I can stand here and go like this with it okay I'm nice and safe my hands are out of the way if I want to be even uh, more safe I can kneel down on the ground use that something that you do more when you're using a, a camping axe or a hand axe um, but two hands here this is going to wobble quite a lot so what I do I don't take hold of the wood here if I cut like this and I slip the saw is going to go into my hand and a saw wound is a lot more um, tragic, if you like, than a knife wound. Because of all these serrated edges, you shred uh, your flesh, which means it takes a lot longer to heal. If you're surviving out in the wild, it's very likely to get infected quite quickly, um, and then you're gonna be in trouble, get septicemia, some kind of blood poisoning. So, when you're using a handsaw, what you wanna do is put this hand over the top, which means that if I slip, the saw is going to go this way and I'm not going to get injured. This hand gives me uh, the ability to steady the wood and then I can just cut away. Like so. Now this is a nice long piece so I can take this in two because this will give me both my stakes to build my reflector. Whenever you finish with a tool, always put it away. Don't walk around the woods with a tool open like a knife or an axe. If you slip and fall on it, it's going to injure you. This is a really good size, nice green hazel. If I use dead wood, the problem with dead wood is once you put a lot of weight against it, it can break quite easily. So green wood is much stronger. I'm going to use my trusty hand axe and we're going to put a point on the end of this so that I can then hit it into the ground to then make my reflector. Now I'm using this stump for a couple of reasons. I want a little bit of height which makes my movement with my hand a little bit shorter which makes it a bit safer. Also if you have a look I've got my knees together and I'm turned sideways against where I'm using my axe, okay? It's just safety in case I, I did hit myself with the axe. I don't want to hit any main arteries, so I keep my knees together to cover my femorals. I'm going to use the axe. I'm holding it quite up, closer to the handle. I'm just going to chip away. I'm turning the wood, and the axe movement is repetitive in the exact same way every time. This keeps it nice and regular and it's safer. Another 
good reason for using a stump to cut on. If I did it on the ground and I missed or I went into the ground with the axe, I could chip the axe on a stone or a rock or something sharp. By using a stump, there's nothing on that stump that I'm going to hurt my axe with, so I'm not going to break the axe or chip it. Okay, there's one point. I'm also going to put a bevel or a chamfer on the other end, which is just making small chips. And this is so that when I smack on it, or batten down on it into the ground, I'm hopefully not going to split the wood. So there's one chamfer. That's going to work very nicely. Put the point on number two. to go okay now that I've got my uh, two pieces of wood I probably want them maybe about a meter away from my fire you can go less it depends what kind of fire um, you're doing and if you want to use your reflector as part of a fire feeder system I'm not going to go into that today so I'm going to go about nearly a meter away and I'm going to put my sticks in the ground at a slight angle. If I put them in vertical, it's quite difficult to stack the wood up against it. But if I put it in at a slight angle, leaning backwards, then I can stack the wood up against it. It still does a really good job, but it's not going to fall over as easily. Now my chamfer on the end allows me to smack on this nice and hard. as you can see when I hit those I hit them nice and hard but they didn't split if you don't put a chamfer on your stick it's quite easy for it to break so that's going to stay there for a long time now Here is one fire reflector. Um, if you look at it carefully, you can see that I've put the bigger logs at the bottom and then the logs are graded to the thinner and lighter ones at the top. That's just to give it strength and balance, basically. Also, sometimes what you find is when you've got this lean going backwards, your whole thing can uh, fall over with the weight of your wood against it. So you might want to get odd ends and use those behind sometimes just to secure and prop up your stake. Putting one up here is a really good idea, especially if you can find a Y shape, put it up there and then have it leaning backwards, that creates triangles. And triangles are the strongest shape in nature 
And if you can think triangles when you're building structures, it's, it works really, really well for strength. Another good thing about having a fire reflector like this is here you can now collect dead wood off the forest floor that's wet and you can lay it up here and your fire will dry it and then you've got easy firewood for the future if you're staying there for more than a day or long term. It's a really good little thing to have. Um, of course the wind changes direction so again if you were staying long term you might think about having a number of these or even if you're staying very long term you would move these back by maybe two, two meters and you'd build a series of them and then you could sleep inside close to the fire, sheltered from the outside and you'd be as cozy as anything.